The Silurian is a geologic period and system that extends from the end of the Ordovician period at 443.8 million years ago, to the beginning of the Devonian period 419.2 mile. As with other geologic periods, the rock beds that define the period start and end are well identified, but the exact dates are uncertain by several million years. The base of the Silurian is set at a major extinction event when 60% of marine species were wiped out. See Ordovician Silurian extinction events. A significant evolutionary milestone during the Silurian was the diversification of Jordan bony fish. Life also began to appear on land in the form of small, moss like, vascular plants that grew beside lakes, streams, and coastlines, and also in the form of small terrestrial arthropods. However, terrestrial life would not greatly diversify and affect the landscape until the Devonian. History of study. The Silurian system was first identified by British geologist Sir Roderick Impey Murchison, who was examining fossil bearing sedimentary rock strata in South Wales in the early 1830s. He named the sequences for a Celtic tribe of Wales, the Silures, inspired by his friend Adam Sedgwick, who had named the period of his study the Cambrian, from the Latin name for Wales. This naming does not indicate any correlation between the occurrence of the Silurian rocks and the land inhabited by the Silures, cf. Geology of Wales, Tribes of Wales. In 1835 the two men presented a joint paper under the title On the Silurian and Cambrian Systems, exhibiting the order in which the elder sedimentary strata succeed each other in England and Wales, which was the germ of the modern geological time scale. As it was first identified, the Silurian series when traced farther afield quickly came to overlap Sedgwick's Cambrian sequence, however, provoking furious disagreements that ended the friendship. Charles Lapworth resolved the conflict by defining a new order vision system including the contested beds. An early alternative name for the Silurian was Gotlandian after the strata of the Baltic island of Gotland. The French geologist Wickeem Barrand, building on Murchison's work, used the term Silurian in a more comprehensive sense than was justified by subsequent knowledge. He divided the Silurian rocks of Bohemia into eight stages. His interpretation was questioned in 1854 by Edward Forbes, and the later stages of Barrand F. G. N. H. have since been shown to be Devonian. Despite these modifications in the original groupings of the strata, it is recognized that Barrand established Bohemia as a classic ground for the study of the earliest fossils. Subdivisions Clandovery The Clandovery Epoch lasted from 443.8 plus or minus 1.5 to 433.4 plus or minus 2.8 ma and is subdivided into three stages. The Rudanian, lasting until 440.8 million years ago. The Aronian, lasting to 438.5 million years ago. And the Telichian. The Epoch is named for the town of Clandovery in Carmarthenshire, Wales. Winlock The Winlock, which lasted from 433.4 plus or minus 1.5 to 427.4 plus or minus 2.8 Maya, is subdivided into the Shinewoodian and Homerian ages. It is named after Winlock Edge in Shropshire, England. During the Wenlock, the oldest known tracheophytes of the genus Cooksonia appear. The complexity of slightly younger Gondwana plants like Baraguanathea indicates so much longer history for vascular plants, perhaps extending into the early Silurian or even Ordovician.
See Evolutionary History of Plants. The first terrestrial animals also appear in the Wenlock represented by air-breathing millipedes from Scotland. Ludlow the Ludlow, lasting from 427.4 plus or minus 1.5 to 423 plus or minus 2.8 ma, comprises the Gorstian stage, lasting until 425.6 million years ago, and the Ludfordian stage. It is named for the town of Ludlow in Shropshire, England. Pridoli the Pridoli, lasting from 423 plus or minus 1.5 to 419.2 plus or minus 2.8 Maya, is the final and shortest epoch of the Silurian. It is named after one locality at the Homogara Pridoli Nature Reserve near the Prague suburb Slivinek in the Czech Republic. Pridoli is the old name name of a cadastral field area. Regional stages in North America A different suite of regional stages is sometimes used. Cayugan, Log Portion, Tonawandan, Ontarian, Alexandrian, Geography, with the supercontinent Gondwana covering the equator and much of the southern hemisphere. A large ocean occupied most of the northern half of the globe. The high sea levels of the Silurian and the relatively flat land resulted in a number of island chains, and thus a rich diversity of environmental settings. During the Silurian, Gondwana continued a slow southward drift to high southern latitudes, but there is evidence that the Silurian ice caps were less extensive than those of the late Ordovician glaciation. The southern continents remained united during this period. The melting of ice caps and glaciers contributed to a rise in sea level, recognizable from the fact that Silurian sediments overly eroded Ordovician sediments, forming an unconformity. The continents of Avalonia, Baltica, and Laurentia drifted together near the equator, starting the formation of a second supercontinent known as Euramerica. When the Proto-Europe collided with North America, the collision folded coastal sediments that had been accumulating since the Cambrian off the east coast of North America and the west coast of Europe. This event is the Caledonian Orogeny, a spate of mountain building that stretched from New York State through conjoined Europe and Greenland to Norway. At the end of the Silurian, sea levels dropped again, leaving telltale basins of evaporites in a bay and extending from Michigan to West Virginia, and the new mountain ranges were rapidly eroded. The Tees River, flowing into the shallow mid-continental sea, eroded Ordovician strata, leaving traces in the Silurian strata of northern Ohio and Indiana. The vast ocean of Panthalassa covered most of the northern hemisphere. Other minor oceans include two phases of the Tethys, the Proto-Tethys and Paleo-Tethys, the Rick Ocean, a seaway of the Ipratus Ocean, and the newly formed Ural Ocean. Climate and sea level. The Silurian period enjoyed relatively stable and warm temperatures, in contrast with the extreme glaciations of the Ordovician before it, and the extreme heat of the ensuing Devonian. Sea levels rose from the Herninchen Low throughout the first half of the Silurian, they subsequently fell throughout the rest of the period. Although smaller scale patterns are superimposed on this general trend, 15 high stands can be identified and the highest Silurian sea level was probably around 140 meters higher than the lowest level reached. During this period, the Earth entered a long, warm greenhouse phase, and warm shallow seas covered much of the equatorial land masses. Early in the Silurian, glaciers retreated back into the South Pole until they almost disappeared in the middle of Silurian. The period witnessed a relative stabilization 
modernization of the Earth's general climate, ending the previous pattern of erratic climatic fluctuations. Layers of broken shells provide strong evidence of a climate dominated by violent storms generated then as now by warm sea surfaces. Later in the Silurian, the climate cooled slightly, but in the Silurian-Devonian boundary, the climate became warmer. Perturbations The climate and carbon cycle appears to be rather unsettled during the Silurian, which has a higher concentration of isotopic excursions than any other period. The Arivacan event, Mulder event and La event each represent isotopic excursions following a minor mass extinction and associated with rapid sea level change. In addition to the larger extinction at the end of the Silurian, each one leaves a similar signature in the geological record. Both geochemically and biologically, pelagic organisms were particularly hard hit, as were brachiopods, corals and trilobites, and extinctions rarely occur in a rapid series of fast bursts. Flora and fauna. The Silurian was the first period to see megafossils of extensive terrestrial biota, in the form of moss-like miniature forests along lakes and streams. However, the land fauna did not have a major impact on the Earth until it diversified in the Devonian. The first fossil records of vascular plants, that is, land plants with tissues that carry water and food, appeared in the second half of the Silurian period. The earliest known representatives of this group are Cooksonia and Baraguanathea. Most of the sediments containing Cooksonia are marine in nature. Preferred habitats were likely along rivers and streams. Baraguanathea appears to be almost as old, dating to the early Ludlow and has branching stems and needle-like leaves of 10 to 20 centimeters. The plant shows a high degree of development in relation to its age. Fossils of this plant are only found in Australia. Eohosta melahidana is an early, probably terrestrial, plant, known from compression fossils of early Silurian age. The chemistry of its fossils is similar to that of fossilized vascular plants, rather than algae. The first bony fish, the ostrich thighs, appeared, represented by the acanthodians covered with bony scales. Fish reached considerable considerable diversity and develop movable jaws, adapted from the supports of the front two or three gill arches. A diverse fauna of Eurypterids, some of them several meters in length, prowled the shallow Silurian seas of North America. Many of the fossils have been found in New York State. Leeches also made their appearance during the Silurian period. Brachiopods, bryozoa, mollusks, heteroloids, tentaculolitoids, crinoids and trilobites were abundant and diverse. Endobiotic symbionts were common in the corals and stromatophoroids. Reef abundance was patchy. Sometimes fossils are frequent but at other points are virtually absent from the rock record. The earliest known terrestrial animal appear during the mid-Silurian, including the millipede Pneumodesmus. Some evidence also suggests the presence of predatory trigonotar bidarachnoids and myriapods in late Silurian facies. Predatory invertebrates would indicate that simple food webs were in place that included non-predatory prey animals. Extrapolating back from early Devonian biota, Andrew Jeremy Al, in 1990 suggested a food web based on as yet undiscovered detritivores and grazes on microorganisms. 